Welcome to the work session for the Board of Education of Queen Anne's County. Um, I would like a, a, a sorry, it's been a long day. <laughs> I would like a motion to approve the agenda for tonight. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the first item is policy for first read, 104 Code of Ethics. Ms. Harper. No. Mr. Pelusky. Mr. Pelusky, okay. Uh, Madam President, uh, the uh, superintendent recommends uh, the Code of Ethics, Conflict of Interest, Policy 104, and Regulation 104.1 uh, to go out for the first read of a three-read process uh, after an extensive uh, review uh, based upon the last uh, board meeting and based upon the last policy committee meeting that we had. Okay, um, and when did you have that meeting, that policy committee meeting? When was that one? November 6th, I believe. Uh, I mean, is that right October. after our meeting last Let me month? check uh, very quickly. No, I apologize. No, yeah, we had that meeting. I believe month. it would have been on the 5th. Yes. It would have been on uh, Tuesday, uh, November the 5th. We met from uh, 3 to 5, actually 3 to 4.15, 4.30. Uh, Mr. Pender, who also serves on that committee, myself, uh, my assistant, Mrs. Andrews, uh, uh, board member, uh, Mrs. Harlow, and Vice President, Mrs. Harper. Okay. But, I mean, on the 6th, though, didn't we say we, we needed some work on it so we weren't going to send it back out, this, the meeting on the 6th? So at the, at the 6th meeting, I, I believe what we had said is that we had just met the day before with the policy committee meeting, and there were both recommendations made by Mrs. Harper as well as Mrs. Harlow. Um, and we said that we would make those changes as, as fast as possible. And I believe at that meeting uh, it was requested that it come before uh, the board at this work session. Uh, we did have a conversation about that, about having it to come to the next board meeting, uh, but I believe that Mrs. Harper and Mrs. Harlow suggested um, that in a couple weeks we would have the work session. So it did give us time uh, to add the recommendations uh, that were made. Uh, I'd like to thank my assistant for, for doing that. And, um, and the uh, edits are reflective uh, of the suggestions that were made. But we haven't seen it. We were not provided with the new version. I asked for it. Um, I got it yesterday, and I have a ton of notes. I sent you an email uh, today, um, and to Ms. Andrews and to Ms. Harlow with all of my notes on it. Um, there are some things that I think still need to be um, tweaked, um, some things in the regulation and some things in the policy. Um, that we need, we should discuss. Um, I had a whole, a whole bunch of questions about advisory opinions and um, action and due process. So, uh, I mean, I don't, I, I don't, and I know that council has not had a chance to see this version. So, um, uh, I'm, and I apologize, Ms. Harper. I, I, I guess I'm confused because when we had met at the policy committee meeting, I asked for more feedback especially is there anything else, any other suggested changes that you would like to make, and we'll be happy to make those. Um, and when we had met, you'd said, no, everything looks good. Um, please add some of the suggested language from um, Howard County Public Schools, which is reflected in there. We did talk about, um, specifically, I believe it was at $1,000, uh, and that was a discussion we had before. It was from $100. We had made that change to $1,000. And when I asked if there were any suggestions on the regulation, um, I was under the impression that no, everything in the regulation looks fine to us. Um, and, then, and, and then I did ask again, I said, is there anything else? And, and I was under the impression that no, because we've worked on this for so long, it is ready to go to the work session because normally we would be looking at policies at our regular session. So that's why we did the fast track because those were the only changes. And we took that language that you both suggested and put that in the appropriate places that we all agreed that it would go in. And that's um, what we should have gotten to be able to sit here yeah. and now work on it. I only had one suggestion that I did not make and I thought of it after our board meeting on the 6th is that we've been following a protocol of being, uh, being cognizant to include 
in the absence of the superintendent, her designee. We've been using that pretty much across the board. I think that needs to be added to this one. But we should have received this with all the Howard County input that's been added since the meeting with the policy committee. We should have gotten a copy of this so we could look at it to be able to sit here and now be ready to work on it if there was anything. Can, can I suggest that we that have a policy committee meeting uh, as soon as possible because there's a lot of stuff in here that I, I have questions on. There's, I haven't even seen it. So I, I have revisions know. that um, when I you, really when don't When is your next think, policy meeting usually? You have a routine one. Correct? Yes, we do. Yeah. I, but I, I really do. want this it to is, get out. Uh, but believe I, it I, is, I think it's, we could just have a meeting and just tweak it and get it done. It is on the uh, 4th. of Our next one is December the 4th. Is our that's, next. That's the day before the meet, our meeting. Though. And that's what I thought that my understanding was that you, you wanted it to come forward today. I, I did. And yes. I when I received it yesterday, not seeing all the revisions until yesterday. And then, I mean, I have. So are these revisions outside of what you all agreed to when you met on um, the 4th? What was, we t what was discussed was inputting some of the Howard County uh, language, which is in here. Right. But they're correct. correct and the, and the um, Towards the end, the policy elements. Policy review. elements, yes. But there are, there are things that are missing. Um, and I and I have a whole list of questions here um, that I, weren't that discussed, we discussed at your, that you discussed. hadn't you hadn't said at the and last I, meeting. And I I just don't feel comfortable putting out something that I don't feel. How are we formatting and editing and all that? Uh, wise, I have Tammy. questions about that too. Okay. Okay. I, hey, well, I, do. I, I think the solution too. is to hold another policy committee if that meeting. That is possible. And I mean, I know this. we're talking about. I have a problem with us having the policy meeting the day before our meeting because well, that's how like we worked get, it out. Yeah, that's maybe how we worked it, and it just maybe. We can change that because we don't have a chance to even review it before we come. You know, which is why I thought that you all wanted to have it for today. Yes, <laughs> that's why we did this I, last I, time. I, I right, was all prepared, and then when floor. I got is there anything this? that we can discuss here now? It is so much. Have copies of it. We haven't um, seen it. Yeah, I'd love so to. It's, it's in your board. Document. Document. It's in your board. Document. Yeah, and I didn't bring my computer because I did it. Here, do you want mine? I just sent you this with yeah. all my comments on it. Yeah. Um, because we're, gonna, because we're going to run into the same thing know, for next board meeting. So if there's anything that we could, because what I believe was done was they made the changes that the policy committee requested. Yes. And so that's what you have. But I understand that Ms. Harper now has some yeah. additional. Yeah. But if, if, if there is something that we can discuss now, then we're Honestly, all together. I, 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 have, I have questions that are legal questions, um, asking about advisory opinions, asking how can an individual... Uh, because it's not covered in the regulation. Um, if an individual wants an advisory opinion for him or herself, does the opinion go to the board or does it go straight to that person? I mean, there's questions here that I... And that's and in the not, policy, not the reg. And they're not addressed in either. I, so there's there's a lots of stuff. Well, I believe... Because uh, it's been, I, technically, it's been vetted numerous, through, yeah. yes, numerous And I believe there boards. was language uh, <laughs> that was added by Kia Chandler, our uh, legal counsel, Correct. based upon maybe two meetings ago, at your request, Mrs. Harper, around, it has, and, and, it and there was them. not clarity. Uh, I think your specific question around what happens if it's a violation of a board member. And Correct, so, and that's not addressed either. So and, we well, need to, I, it's not. I, that's a lot of stuff in here that I, I really think that. So I would. Yeah, so we so what we're again. saying then, just to um, sort of put a, put it in a package for everybody, is that you want to try to schedule another committee meet, policy committee meeting prior to somewhere between okay. now and before the next one is scheduled, which is the day before a board meeting. Um, right, which is and week, and week, if uh, you're asking that Mr. Week. Burns or we had Ms. Chandler to do right. the legal review. Um, if you're asking that we get whatever changes that you're going to suggest before a legal um, counsel prior to the next board meeting, then the we'll government. have to see what we can do. You know, we've got to coordinate your schedules. And it's, well, I, excuse I, me. What can we even accord, uh, you know, accommodate? I know it's a short week next week. Well, next week's Thanksgiving, so we know. <laughs> and I mean, just as a general rule, I don't like to have something one day and look at it the next. You know, and have a well, I, I failed to ask for it. I, I no, mean, but what I'm I, saying, it, 
Just and as, as a general rule, you don't. No, right. right. <laughs> but, you but, but we we tried to accommodate the request. When this is on well, board, and that's why we should have received this as a board. You know, my one at a time, please. What you have? Sorry. Are you showing strike and delete on this board doc so we can, when we read it, we can yes. see and what's. Yes. Yes. So yes. It is on board members are in the policy can see what's it's, been done. It's on. You can see the old language. You can see strike throughs. So what's on there now is the revised. That is the most recent request. Yes, sir. That is the most current version. Yeah, and there was some formatting. There was it was just stuff, and it just I don't feel comfortable putting out something that I don't feel um, that I I can't make heads or tails out of. I wouldn't expect someone who's not read this to understand it. So I, well, I just don't feel comfortable. Yeah. And I mean, I'm your choice of words, but heads or tails, the committee has reviewed it. Um, you have additional input and suggestions. So some extensive, I just want to acknowledge the work that the policy committee has done. It's not as if no one's seen it or worked on it. So yeah, we'll, we'll try to get the schedules coordinated. We'll sure. get it in front of legal oh. again. Sure. And please, and please do it um, in enough time so we can take a look well, at it before the board. Let's, let's look at what the calendar is, right? So okay. we got two days of school, of, of you know, in session next, next week. And the following week... Is the board it's meeting? The board meeting. Yeah. So if we so, can get it earlier, that would be useful. Being well, cognizant of everybody's schedule. Yeah. Right. Well, I'm just going to say right off the bat, this is the, this is from the 11:15 meeting. I've got it dated. This was the 11:15 meeting. It was the red line copy we worked from at the meeting. I've got my notes from the 11:05 um, meeting. I'm sorry, not 11:15. And there's stuff that was inserted here in red line that isn't even. The very first paragraph in this version that we're looking at here in Board Docs isn't even here, under purpose. That whole section's been removed. Did we agree to remove that? Uh, well, that's... Yes, we yes, Mrs. Harlow. And, yes, yeah. that, that was agreed upon. That was okay. language that the policy committee recommended from specific language that Howard County Public Schools had because the discussion well, was why does it get right and then we said per your suggestion would you like that in the purpose you said yes that that seems more clear you also see in the statement we removed in section two um, that was language that came from Howard County Public Schools because the yes, policy committee that wanted that complete statement so as you see everything there is in red but you um, mind terribly um, so I have all this all these corrections. Sure, is we'll it, be happy is it, to take is it possible that I just meet with Mrs. Andrews? Do I if does she have time and I can just meet with her and we can do this and knock it out? And that yeah. way it doesn't you don't, don't need to be there? Well if it's I, I would say if it's if it's content, then yeah, I, I, I would think so. Absolutely. Policy committee members. And, and remember one of the things that we also suggested is that it, from an editing standpoint you know, we're, we're, we have to be focused on the content oh, because yes. we can get the formatting at the last, the third, which is what we always do at the third read, we get it prepared for in its final, final version. So what's difficult from a, uh, a standpoint of editing is getting all the I's and the twos and the, and the numbering system absolutely perfect. And I think what we've got to remain focused on is the, is the content and those editing pieces um, okay. We can we can certainly make. I'd be happy to take your your feedback, Mrs. Harper. I sent it to you in an email. Okay. It has I, it I, has all of my cute I, little notes on it. And I apologize about in schools all day. No, I I, I, at I just email. sent it to you. Okay. So um, so otherwise you want to stick with the December fifth meeting That's fine. for the policy. That's fine. Fourth. Okay. But fourth. 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 But what I'd like to do is then from that point forward move those policy meetings closer to maybe the mid mid month thing or the week after the mid month and, meeting. And actually we, we had spoken about that mm -hmm. um, internally and we were gonna bring that up to um, to the board cabin okay, because great. maybe having it in the middle we've got some time to bring it to uh, right. you know but I also know we set those dates at the beginning of the year set those dates back in April with Mr. Farley. So, so if we can change them, that would be lovely. So that would be great. We'll, we'll, we'll do the absolute best that we can, certainly to uh, make Everybody. every accommodation possible. So we should have it by the 27th then, you think? 
Well, if we don't have it by the 27th, then we're done. Depends on when they yeah. get their schedule she together. Says, to she thinks mm -hmm. she's going to try to do it in person with them, and then they'll meet the 5th that they have planned, just for this, just for, I mean, the 4th, just for December. And then from that point on, they'll change the schedule okay. to accommodate so we'll toward we'll, the middle of the month. Just if, if we can do it before, time we'll to do review that. It, just, and then we can email it back and forth if you'd mm -hmm. like. That and way it's... Sure. I know, your time is... And we had legal counsel doing this. What was the other name? Not... Chandler. And there, we don't need two lawyers doing this. No. no. I mean, no. Well, <laughs> when our Darren had looked at it, I don't need him looking at it and mm -hmm. have that no. discussion because no. that's just it's money. Fine. Just mm -hmm. one's enough. Just yes. one. Yes. Just one. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, do we understand what we're doing? Good. Yeah. Thank yes, you. We got okay. it. Thank you. Thanks for your work on it, everyone. You're welcome. This is a tough one, though, and this is one that it's important to get right. Okay, next item is the budget discussions. Good evening, board members. Sir. How's everyone tonight? Um, Doing well. What we'd like to do is the manual, we'll just pick up where we left off from the last time. Um, if you have your landscaped uh, packet, we ended last time with um, special education. And this time we'll pick up on page 25 with student personnel services. And I'll just, you know, refresh as, as everybody turns to their page. I'll just refresh as to what we're, what you're looking at. Um, the first page in every one of these categories is a summary. It shows you the FTEs. It shows you five years of actual spend history, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. And just I want to reemphasize, that's what we spent in those years. There is no reflection of what was actually budgeted in those years in this document. It's what was spent in those years. Then we have the approved 20 budget. Obviously, we're still in the middle of the year, so you're not going to see expenditures there. And then requested, after the first review by the executive team at one of our uh, budget retreats, the requested amount. And you won't see anything for salaries or wages in there because we're still working through the uh, salary projections that uh, we'll be discussing uh, you know, during our negotiation process. So what you're seeing over on the requested increase column is just some very small increases or decreases as the executive team has put them forward. And so that's what's reflected on page 25. It continues throughout. So 25, again, is the summary where it groups it by the object level, salaries, contracted supplies, other charges, equipments, and if there's any transfers. And then if you flip to page 26, now we start getting into a little bit more of the line item detail that you've requested. So the first, the first section there is, of course, your staffing, uh, your secretarial service, um, staff, and then um, Pupil personnel and homeschool coordinators, and those are the salary dollars attributed to those. Um, <coughs> consultants uh, for student personnel services back in 2015. I, I can't speak to exactly what that was, but there was a there was a charge back then. But you can see there's not a budget for that, so it must have been a one-time thing, maybe perhaps used with end-of-the-year money. <coughs> I have a question on this under the people uh, the pupil personnel worker. That is the entire salaries are in that one little category. You don't split them up um, <coughs> to when they're servicing in different schools or any of that? No, ma'am. So by, by state law, um, we're given a school school reporting manual. So I call it the teal book. It's been <coughs> teal for 50 years, so we just call it the teal book. In there is very prescribed on how we can charge things out. Very few salaries cross different categories. Uh, Mr. Pinder would be one, Mr. Paluski would be one, because they service not only maintenance and operations and transportation or not only oversee schools, but oversee the instruction and actually oversee student personnel and, um, special, ed. and then special ed. So th those things. But when it comes down to the specific um, classroom people, uh, staff, they are not spread amongst different categories because we're required on how we need to report that. Like Mr. Paluski's divided between about six things? Four. I think four it's four. Things. It's, it's mid-level mid mid administration, special ed, uh, student personnel, health, so five, and um, um, just one, special ed, st student personnel. Instruction. Four. Instruction. Instruction. And yeah. central instruction. office. Yeah, that's an instruction. Yeah, that would be in that mid-level administration category. Yeah, mid-level. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. when, okay. When I see a number, just uh, the, the number of dollars, that's salary. Correct. Does not include benefits. No benefits. Nope. So it, it's, does it include our FICA part of the salary? No, so that's, we'll get that towards the end. That's in, and again, by state law, we have to attribute all those in our fixed charges category. And you'll see the accumulation of everybody's Social Security, everybody's health insurance, all on the backside. It just uh, 
figure when I look at these numbers. Should I add 20, 25 percent? On average, we're about 25 percent. Because it's, of course, 7.65 for FICA. It's about 10% for retirement. You throw a flat anywhere between seven to $20,000 for um, health insurance for the employer cost. So we use anywhere between 25 and 30%. So 25 on a lower end and probably on a higher. Yeah, 30 on a higher. Mm -hmm. We do, when we bring positions to this board for um, approval, like new positions when we add to the board, um, we use a standard kind of like an average. And last year's average for health insurance was twelve thousand five hundred dollars. You could hire somebody that doesn't need insurance. You could hire somebody that has health. I mean, a family insurance. So we use twelve thousand five hundred, and that's based on the average of what our population is. We'll be resetting those numbers for this year. You do it every year, right? Yes, ma'am. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Okay. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and same thing with average salaries. Obviously, we don't know the mm -hmm. the cost of a teacher whether we're getting them from another county or it's a brand new teacher. So we average those costs as right. well. But when I look at these numbers, when you add another 25%, that's significant. Yes. But if you're going to do that, and if you're in analysis, to make sure you understand it, it, it's, it's going to come up again. Yep. But I yep. just will like to notice when we say that. Yep. Where I am. Absolutely. Okay. Um, page 27. Um, again, just a student personnel is a very small category. There's not much here. There's $2,000 in office supplies for all that they do there. Uh, mileage and travel, which is for the PPWs mainly to go back and forth uh, to the buildings. A small amount, meetings and conferences just to keep up with what's going on in the world. And then a very small cost for subscriptions and dues, $350. And a lot of that, as, as we've discussed, is not a magazine that you're getting. It's, it could be a, um, a, a dues to a professional organization or something like that. The people service, the P P P P P W P P Ws. They're um, they uh, get a stipend for travel or no? It's completely reimbursable based on the mileage that they send. So every month they send in a mileage reimbursement. And they report. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Yep. Yeah. <coughs> As you can see, it's a very very small um, small category there. And I have to apologize, I just noticed that there's a typo. If you look at page 26, at the bottom, there's that rogue $388,000 number sitting there. Yeah. That just must be a typo because, um, so that, that should be a zero because obviously there's nothing above it. I apologize for that because um, that affects the bottom line number on page 27. I was wondering why there was such a disparity and, and that just happened to be a typo in the, in the program. I'm sorry about that. So that eight hundred eighty-five thousand dollar number needs to be reduced by three eighty-eight one eighty. Three eighty-eight. Three eighty-eight one eighty. So we're about five hundred thousand. Yes. Which is right in line with what we budgeted. Next page, twenty-eight. Health services, same thing. Very small category. Uh, this is basically our nurses. Um, <coughs> We, um, and then help, uh, nurses and then our substitute nurses has come out of here. Very small amount on page 29 for... So when uh, we say 14, we have 14 nurses, 14 schools is basically what we're looking at. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. And then there's, a, I think there's $20,000 in there for nurse substitutes for when a nurse is out. Try to accommodate that. Um, health room supplies, again, um, this is our fluoride treatments. Is there a band-aid? Uh, just interject. You oh. said there's $28,000 set aside for nurse substitutes. Where is that listed under? It's in the, the school nurses category, right, right in that same line. That category. That, that same line that's on page 29. So the $841,000 number, um, that includes twenty-two, twenty-four $24,000, I think, in um, substitute nurses. Welcome. And as you notice, the there's a three thousand dollar. Three thousand or twenty thousand? Was that twenty thousand you said? Or it's twenty two or twenty. It, it's like it's that. it's the low twenties. Um, but because of the last two years, if you recall, as the board, we've approved uh, the need additional funds in there because of nurse substitutes. So that's the reflective of the three thousand dollars you have shown there on page twenty nine. That first set of lines there. That's what that three thousand dollars reflects. An increase for that item. And then health room supplies, um, this budget has not been increased in the entire timeline that you're seeing here. Um, and we are now um, going to a sole source vendor to make some of the distribution of these supplies a lot easier. Um, and we're also providing additional uh, fluoride supplies. So we're requesting an increase of $4,000 to compensate for those kind of things. 
but this is yeah, basically your band-aids and everything that goes in the health room. So the fluoride, wasn't that, didn't that used to be supplied by the health department? I think it used to be, but for having those conversations, we've been doing it for a multitude of years. Health department also done Vision screening is still supplied by the health department, but the fluoride treatments in the classroom, we pay That's for that. Right. I've been there for 24 years. We only had dental program my first two years. Oh, wow. Now it's gone. We lost funding. You said we... We uh, increased it. We do it all the time. So why is that? that was the increase? Is it just the prices have gone we, up? We think that the the pricing is is going to go up, and then I think we've increased the amount of the cost of the fluoride treatments have gone up from um, solution to like a prepackaged item, uh, which makes dispensing a little bit easier and a little bit less mess in the classroom and things like that. And it's a little bit more costly there, and that's what's reflected here. Okay. And then again, flipping to page 30, the little bit of um, a mileage. Um, if nurses were to travel between schools, um, there's no budget for meetings and conference. Um, something was scheduled last year that cost $695, and we can research that for you if you'd like. Um, but again, very small budget of $200 for my, between mileage and meetings. And of course, no equipment. Um, if they need to replace a refrigerator or something in the health room, that comes out of that health room supplies account. So we don't have an equipment account for this either. So the $7,000 increase is reflective of $3,000 for subs, $4,000 for MOI. <laughs> Page 31, student transportation. So, and that's the summary there. Page 32 shows... On the, on the, on the yeah. uh, contract services, is that a one-year or two-year? We're on a multi-year contract now? <clears throat> Three-year contract. <clears throat> So, but there are escalators in that. That's what I'm saying. So when I look at 140, that might be over the next every year. I believe it's a two percent. <coughs> I'm sorry, I believe whatever it is, but it's going to be. But it's a three year, so that's going to yes, stay fixed. Stay fixed. Uh -huh. yep. so tw but 2021 is year two then of the. This, yes, this upcoming year will be year two. Okay. Yeah, we're in year one. Flipping to page 32, that's your basically your oversight staff. Uh, and again, point two of Mr. Pender, as we just discussed, is charged to this particular category. Um, supervisor of transportation, two driver trainers, and two secretaries. And then we have our 28 bus drivers. Um, and then the school vehicle attendants are hourly, and uh, like athletic trip drivers are at, um, hourly as well. And all of that is encompassed in those dollars there. And as you can see, there's been, because of need, uh, been a significant increase in this line uh, since 2015. Um, pretty regular. And, and go back to 31. When we say salary and wages, we have 33.2 people in transportation. Yes. That's not including bus drivers. It, it does include our bus drivers. It okay. doesn't include any of the hourly, like bus assistants and things like that. Well, because they're not but uh, benefited okay, positions. Okay, okay. So I'm, okay, then I look down and add this 5, 1, 2, 2, 28. Then we get to 33.2. Yes. Okay, gotcha. Yep. Why Why are they not considered? Say that again. You're talking about the assistance? Mm -hmm. Where is that reflected in our budget? So it's under, the tra it's under the drivers and bus assistance line. So we have 28 benefited bus drivers. Mm -hmm. And then your school vehicle attendants and our hourly employees. They're not... They're not a benefited position. They're not a full-time benefited position. They work hourly. Right, so we don't have an estimate for that. I can break that out for you between the bus drivers and the hourly, but it's, it's all in encompassed 20, in this it's in one line. One. And okay, it's all, all right. in that million, one nine, million ninety-five four hundred one. But, right. I, but I don't add, I know it's another line item, but I don't add 25% there because all of them don't get benefits. Correct. The, uh, yes. So the dollar amount is all inclusive here, mm -hmm. but the FTE, the positions, is 28 because all of those other assistants are not full-time employees. They're part-time, and we don't count that. In but the ones FTEs. that are full-time, we're obligated for health insurance yes. and all other stuff. Yes, That's where I'm yes. using that 25%. Yes. All of them don't get it. If, if you'd like, like, I can break out these numbers between the two no, to come like up with 1095 Yeah, no, I just kind of like to know where. Okay. But, you know, to, to that standpoint, that health insurance and retirement are the two biggest, other than FICA, are the two biggest costs. So, you know. And for a bus driver, that's probably significant. Probably if you threw it up in the air and threw 20% on this particular category, you'd probably be close to compensate for those that don't have benefits. So in bus contractors, 
Um, you can see the cost increase. There's the note that in FY20, we did increase this contract $180,000 because of the, the renewal of the contract. Uh, and then we're uh, requesting an additional $120,000 in 2021 to the continuation of that inflationary factor. How many buses do we have, roughly? I know we have... Um, You're talking about um, county buses, uh -huh. special needs. We have about 18 um, buses every single day that are on the, on the road. road. That doesn't include athletic trips. Right. But, but, <clears throat> and in contract buses, we probably have 70? That's about 72. 72. Yeah. Consultants, this is um, funds to pay for um, the AccuWeather um, reporting for the weather, and which include, and Mr. Pinder can speak to this if there's any questions, with um, road temperatures and, you know, the projections of that and, and the whole transportation department to make those decisions um, related to weather and whether we can put our buses on the road or not. What do we get rid of to have such a... We cut it in half. I like that. I'm going to be honest with you. Oh, Ms. Harper, off the top of my head, I, I don't know. I okay. have to go back and look at it. There, there might have been a one-time consultant a, that we can put yes, in there. I, I well, it looked call. like 16 and 17 were 11 or 12, and then we went yeah. up to 17, Did you 25. Like a detail as to what uh, the 25 was? No, I, I mean, we had I just do it more several. Often. <laughs> so, again, let me just... Let me just reset the stage on that. That twenty-five thousand isn't a budgeted amount, and we cut it to get down to twelve. Okay. We've had twelve all along. Just this year, for some reason, it's we higher. had to spend twenty-five in that particular. Right. Bus inspections. Um, the cost of those have been going up, um, mainly due to the age of the fleet that we have. Um, safety training. Um, consistent. One more question on that. Let that bus. Um, I mean, I'm sorry, the consultants. So you're saying that they we only pay them each time we call them. We don't have a set contract with them. No, this this is for programs like AccuWeather. Like we have a um, weather service that we call up and speak to a meteorologist 24 hours, seven days a week, and you know because what we get really from the county is just like one update, you know, after the fact. Um, with this service, we can get the information that we need ahead of time and look at their forecast. Um, but that doesn't include uh, the spotters. Right. So the 25000 I mean, I don't understand why it was so high in nineteen. i I'd have to go back and look. I, it doesn't, nothing really stands out. Um, I'd Is have to see what the... basically went from seventeen to 8000 more. Something. But now it's down to... I don't know. It, sometimes it, we have special needs consultants that come in to work with the drivers and, and things like that of how you're strapping the people improperly and all the different techniques. It could have been that. I, I don't but we can we can get the details. I'll get you the details. Yeah, just wondering because because now you're estimating twelve. You're just estimating the average. Then, right? so twelve, I would say. Um, twelve runs about the AccuWeather. That's what that is. Okay. Twenty-five. I have to go back and look. Okay. Thank you. Um, bus inspections, safety training. As you can see, there's been an increase in that, mainly because of all the compliance issues. Um, not compliance issues, I'm sorry, the new compliance requirements that are uh, put on the transportation um, department. And as you can see, uh, we've only have a $6,500 budget. Mr. Pender's requested an additional 8000 to bring that in line with what the prior to you, prior two-year expenditure average has been. Computer sense to me. So you need that this year, then, you're saying? I'm asking the wrong yeah. question. You no, need no. it. You definitely need it. We didn't budget enough, you're saying, last year. Yes. On the computer system maintenance, this is the TransFinder, this is the computerized bus routing system, and then Zonar, which is our GPS locating that we have on some or all of our buses. Uh, on our county owned buses. <coughs> so we under budgeted that as well. Okay. Yeah, all of these are, if you look at the five year trend. Yeah, I see. Um, I see I'll it. tell you, in saying that, Dr. Kane and Captain Kelly, we went to Central Elementary School the other day. And for half an hour, buses are coming in there. 30 buses, I think they said. I mean, because they're tiered and stuff. Yeah. And that's pretty amazing when you see that. There's just more than one person saying, go here. That's, oh, yeah. I mean, it was pretty interesting to watch yeah. it for a half an hour. That many buses come into a 500. Three different schools all at the same time in Centerville. In Centerville. I mean, that's it's pretty amazing. Yeah, they, I mean, so somebody's got, you know, and they don't run into each other. Amazing. 
What's that? Your program handles all that. That's yeah. It's, I mean, that's it's more than people think when you just think you're running a bus around a loop and coming home. <laughs> well, it's not only the programs because you have the, what the routing committee that comes down, and a lot of this stuff is also still done manually to yeah. mm -hmm. check some balance. So. I mean, well, you so know, we're, I think we're 100 percent. We're 100 percent transportation school, and we have nobody. We're about the only county in the state that has 100 percent transportation. Every student is provided transportation in this county. Every student's provided it. They right. Can opt out right. if they want. Right. But some, a lot of st counties, like ones that have bigger cities, have yeah, walkers. Walk. So, That's you know, saying. we're 100% we're where Our, I think at we one time we were policy. in the county. We have a policy for walkers, too, but we well, don't I know, but everybody it. gets picked. I mean, right. we we can. Follow. I mean, half the kids drive, too. But it's, it's you know, it's a pretty complicated issue. Physical, uh, um, physical examinations, bottom of page 23, again, trying to keep up with um, the demand and the cost of those exams. Um, drug testing services, um, just to try to offset some of those additional costs based on um, historical trend, there's a $1,000 cut, so that will offset some of the increases that we're asking for. Um, the bus repairs, we've been trending quite well with bus repairs, so we're cutting that by $10,000, uh, but we're increasing the field trips, um, and also to try to provide for Mr. Paluski some college visitation opportunities for our students. Uh, currently, we don't have that budgeted. Uh, so that's an increase of $10,000 there. So if you look at it in the grand scheme of things, you know, the of the $140,000 request there in contracted services, 120000 of that is just eaten up by the bus contractors. Can I ask a question? Have we, um, the college visits, have we got a list of where we're going to be taking the students or are we keeping them low? I mean, within a certain range or? We have we actually have, have done some that are local. Yeah, um, Salisbury. Mm -hmm. okay. that, have, that have been local. So this will open up the opportunity for some other schools, other colleges and universities. Like Daniel, St. Mary's, mm -hmm. something, you know. How do we it's nice. how do we determine Florida State? Who does that? Yeah. Who um, counselors? Yeah. Counselors do mm -hmm. it. And and part of that's uh, connected with the Equal Opportunity Schools initiative. Not only is it about rigorous academic work, but it's all about college access and getting exposure to uh, both of our high school uh, counseling offices. Uh, as you know, they do college fairs, but um, getting, we're getting more and more requests, you know, to take students. In fact, I believe it was Kent Island High School this year, they're scheduled, but last year, where they took the kids to Baltimore where there's a college fair. Mm -hmm. So they have access to, I, I, mean, I don't know the number, more so than if, if a school host and then, you know, you'll get X amount of colleges that come to the school. We're now going out where these are larger venues. They have more access to more colleges and universities. I attended one at Broad Deck years ago, and there was easily 100 schools there, all aligned. I mean, it was, it was If we're going around. to a certain college, are they trying to recruit our kids? They want to sell them on that school? I mean, is that what the... Sure, it's it's part of its recruitment. It's part about just exposure to you know uh, child available? interest. What's available? What yeah. majors? I'm do just you wondering if some of these, if we're going to go to Salisbury or somewhere, would they pay for some of the costs when we're taking the kids there? Nice thought. <laughs> well, I mean, they're it never, is a nice they're thought. For students, and some of these private schools that are going out of business are going to be looking for a lot more. Yeah, yeah. yeah but so I'm just wondering if we're taking some. When you say McDaniel or somebody like that, if they want us to send 20 kids there on a bus, then you know. I don't know. They, just, they generally don't have any bigger budgets yeah, than we do, yeah. particularly right. schools of education. They are <laughs> some of the lowest funded schools yeah. in colleges and universities. So transportation <coughs> for however many high schools want to do college visits is probably, it has not been the norm. I'll put it that way. Well, okay. Even when we do, it, do we get with Kent County or Talbot County and maybe do a shared bus or something? Or do we have 40 people or 50 on a bus? At a time? Oh, oh, we'll, 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 we'll get a we'll load of oh, yeah. requests okay. for more. Sorry, I brought it up. I just was just wondering what was in the pipeline. Good question. It is a good question. And these kids that are going to these schools, they're interested in that school. They're not just randomly taking a day well, and taking a few Sure. So, so what, we'll, what the counselors will do is they'll say, okay, they'll decide, you know, which schools to go to, and kids who are actually interested will okay. will go. Mm -hmm. It's based on a weekend or a Saturday or Friday. Or <laughs> we've done them both. We've done them. I mean, it's a Saturday. Week. I would think so they're more interested because they're taking some time out of their own time. If they're doing it on a weekday, they're just taking out of school. Taking out of school. But if for our employees, <laughs> it's better if we do it during the week yes. because it's working for them. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, page thirty-five. Bus operations. I don't think our insurance would cover it if we did it on a Saturday. Take field trips on Saturdays. 
again, an increase there of $50,000 just to kind of trend upwards. Um, and a lot of this is attributed to the additional runs that we're making it. You know, uh, gas is pretty, or diesel fuel, has been fairly stable, but I think we're putting more miles on our buses, uh, which is meaning us we're burning more fuel. And that's what a, a big component of this particular, um, um, shoot, sorry, um, particular line item is from. And also, I think we get some work done on our buses by various entities in that for the supplies that are going there, like crossing arms and strobe lights that need to be replaced. And again, a lot of that's reflective of the age of the fleet as well. Where are the fuel cost costs assessed in here? In bus operations. In bus operations. Because it comes from uh, roads board. So are we still with the county as far yes. as yeah. piggybacking on that? So we fuel up from that. We fuel we, up at their, their yes, fuel station. Their, uh, the county roads okay. for uh, county owned buses. And then also the public works um, uh, mechanics work on our County buses. It's your newer buses doing the distance, isn't it? What's that, ma'am? It's your newer buses that are doing the big distances. Yes, we're trying. To, uh, we're switching all over to air conditioned buses, and then I mean, I can tell you, I believe it's 23 special needs students we have from one year this past year, and they're all in the county. Then we have three non-public placements that we're also transporting to that are new schools. So I mean, there's a, a large increase in mileage and, and hours coming into that. Yeah. That's something that you know, is trending, but also something that we really can never know. I mean, somebody can move in you know, to the community that needs to go to another school. But So we're air conditioning. Our, we're, all our new buses come with air conditioning? All of our county-owned buses, yes. There's a lot of different medical needs, um, the IEPs and things like that, that uh, our stadiums and child needs it. So. Um, especially right now with the bridge traffic for those students that are sitting there sometimes an hour, you know, waiting. I mean, if it was 9,500 degrees out, it's... Uh, Is this going to cause us a long-term problem with our contractors when we... No, I'll be honest with you, most of them are switching over to it. At their also. cost? Yes. And we don't require it That's what um, I'm in the contract, but most of them are switching over to it because it's going to benefit them mm -hmm. um, more happier students on a bus, but also if they do charter trips, you know, nobody wants to ride to the Orioles game and, you know, 100 other so. But the special needs buses, that can induce a seizure. Yes. They have mm -hmm. wide range temperatures. So you're saying our, all of ours currently have air? Mm -hmm. We're, I'd say this, uh, probably after the two that we replace this upcoming year, I believe they will all be uh, air conditioned. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. And when will they be going out? They will be replaced this upcoming yeah. year, uh, so Ju July, August. Um, That's for the next year. So we'll put that in our capital budget for replacement for those. Okay. Thank you. Printing, printing and publishing, pretty much nothing to discuss there. And then supplies, <laughs> materials, it's just general office supplies. And you can see that's trending within um, historical needs. Page 36. Um, we are seeing an increase from uh, MABE, Maryland Association Boards of Education, from the Insurance Trust uh, on the cost of insurance for our fleet. Um, $20,000 increase is requested there. Um, there are several national state meetings um, that are required of the transportation staff, so there's a $1,000 increase there. Uh, again, you can see the historical trend supports this. Um, auto expense, uh, very, very little amount of money related to the car that the transportation, uh, supervisor of transportation has access to. Um, and then if there is any mileage reimbursement there for any other worker, it would be shown here as well. And then again, back to a professional um, subscription of 452, I'm sure this is for uh, Association of School Business Officials, $450. So, so total what? and other charges, a $21,000 increase. Is the auto expense, say that again, you went real fast. In so this is for the maintenance and repair on the vehicle that the supervisor of transportation has access to. Okay. And then if, if someone else in the department r travels and gets a mileage reimbursement, it would be reflected here, but it's so minimal, it wasn't worth having a separate category for that. Okay, for and then the here. conferences and meetings, do we, do you look at all those, mm -hmm. Sid? I mean, those you have a set are, amounts that are used. Yes, MSDE transportation has... Uh, basically three or four conferences a year. Um, sometimes they're held in Western Maryland to accommodate, um, sometimes in Central Maryland, sometimes on the Eastern Shore down towards Ocean City. So it just varies on where they, they, they hold the conference. Um, but yeah, I sign off on 
So this is MSDE driven. Okay, thanks. And then under the replacement bus or vehicles, um, we have a $15,000 bus there, so it, um, budget there. Um, this is not really necessarily for buses, obviously. Buses would cost more than $15,000. Um, this would be a placeholder for any um, replacement of the vehicle that we just talked about. However, you can see that last couple of years we haven't really utilized this money, but leaving it there has offset the <coughs> overages in other accounts. But there's no change there requested because I believe you are contemplating perhaps changing that vehicle. I don't know what the mileage is on it, but I'm sure it's high. And that was the reason that remains um, in that budget request, $15,000. And that finishes student transportation with a total increase of $211,000. Nothing is, if it all, everything stays the same in this money, does it revert back to the general fund? Yes, but as we've experienced in the transportation, we've used those monies in other categories. Yes. But if for some reason yes, there were any balances left in any of the state categories, it would go to fund balance. Which, just to remind the board, last year was eighty seventy-eight thousand dollars. Oh, well, it was eighty-seven when you include the restricted grants. I'm concerned about the. Yeah. Yeah. So you're saying the fifteen thousand? I, I missed that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, it was. It was just fifteen thousand. Is the the new bus we new buses we got left this year? No. No. So it went from. In, we've, if you look at our maintenance custodial fleet. Um, a lot of those vehicles are um, some were 1989 we just got rid of um, some of them are still like 1998 we used to you know do the lease purchase and the county's been generous with their capital portion the past couple of years to let us go out right buy vehicles um, like mr. Carter's has 260,000 miles on it um, that we need to re be replaced if we do not get funded that capital money I have no other way of getting vehicles um, to replace the ones that you know already have two hundred some three hundred thousand dollars. So that really goes to the maintenance, you know, the one custodian vehicle and transportation vehicles. Not it's a drop in the bucket. Buses. So the replacement buses vehicles. Can't, you're talking about buses for moving students. I'm sorry. The description of it is what confused me. We had down there. New vehicles, buses for the purpose of transporting students to and from. So if we were to go through because we didn't get capital funding and need to replace buses, that's where this as a board would have to come back and say we need to put money in this category because those buses after 15 years have to come off the road. So if we don't buy them from capital, there would be a, a budget request increase here to reflect that. Since we're not doing that this year, what's reflected here is the request to replace the Supervisor of transportation's vehicle, which is why it's only fifteen thousand dollars. But a new bus is one hundred eight, one hundred ten, twenty thousand. If if you what we've tried to do, like if we know we're going to have six or seven buses that need to go out in one year, and we've tried to separate it so we're not hitting the county as hard. Um, I, I looked at the projections the other day, and I I want to say for the next two years, it's uh, two buses I believe that we need to be replacing. Um, then one year there's nine, so. It's that. a hit or miss with, you know, with what we're doing. We try not to hit them with seven buses all at once. So if you have 30-some buses and they're 15 years, you need a straight math to it, roughly oh, sure around two a year. Mm -hmm. I get two one year and four the next mm -hmm. and none the next. So that, that, like I said, they've been very generous with that. Okay. Okay. Page 37, operations and plants. So this is our custodian and our where our utilities are charged. Again, the summary page on 37. Flipping to page 38, um, the outline of the salaries. Now, now, the supply and materials, that's where we talk about Kleenex and toilet paper and stuff like that. That's why we're up 30000 because we're Yes. Gonna... This board approved the contract of $300,000, and um, you know, with the cost inflation, I'm sure we're going to exceed that. So we have 49 custodians, 14 lead custodians, and a building service foreman here, Mr. Carter, as we talked about, and then um, eight computer repair technicians, one supervisor of information technology make up the nine positions here at the central office. And again, this is required where we have to report these. So our technology people are reported in the um, category of operational plant. But it's not just custodians, technology as well. Interesting that they're not in central office. 
they're out. They're based here at Central Office. We don't assign computer technicians to a specific school because the you know Correct. we only have eight. So, but they're they're based here. Okay. Well, I understand that, but I'm just wondering, since they're based here, they weren't part of Central Office. You put them in operations. Yes, but because state law, that's where it tells us we have to. And it also reduces our administrative cost, you know, because sure. otherwise we'd have a large administrative category. Um, but we charge them where we're required to do so. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Repairs to equipment. Again, no increase there. Thirty-five thousand dollars budget. It's pretty much in line. It fluctuates a little bit here and there. Computer equipment repairs. Again, depending on the age of the computers we have, the replacement cycles, the warranties, whether we buy cases or extended warranties, that fluctuates there. So there's no increase requested there. Same along with the maintenance contracts. Um, there is a note there. If, if you remember from a couple of weeks ago, there was a four thousand dollar increase because the HR applicant tracking software which is administrative, which we are required to report there. I did report that there, and in the past, it had come from this particular line, so it's just a $4,000 swipe that we did in the current year, but we're not requesting any increase there for the subsequent year. And then our timekeeping system contract, $73,000. You can see that's right in line with what we have. Um, we did have to buy some time clocks this year because they were outdated. I think we talked about that from firmware. But this is our ADP system that we have in every school that tracks all of our time for all our employees. Custodial supplies. As Mr. Smith mentioned, a $30,000 increase there. Um, and you can see the gradual progression that that number keeps going up from 237 five years ago to 284. So we have underbid, under budget this year. So the the custodial contract, the three hundred thousand dollars, includes not only the supplies, but there's also some contracted services. So it, the three hundred thousand dollars wasn't all supplies; it was all to DACON, but it wasn't all supplies. Some of that cost is reflected on page thirty-nine under maintenance contracts. I think it's equipment stuff, equipment related with DACON. And we're under a blanket contract for supplies, but each school, they were their own, <coughs> or does it come We work on a vendor management inventory. Uh -huh. So when you go into the custodial closets, you see a minimum and a maximum. And we stay within that uh, parameter. If we see something that we're not using much of, we'll drop it down, or if we're, you know, it, we'll actually you know, bubble that up. But green clean is not cheap. Right. Um, it's a lot more expensive. Um, you know, we're trying to get some equipment for the custodians to use since we're not hiring additional people just for them to be able to do their job a little bit more efficiently. So, um, and this is something that I've talked to other counties. They're seeing the same thing. Right. The Does it computerize when they take stuff out and they, so it, then it just knows to restock it when it it's comes all, back? It's all tracked. Um, and we can sit there and say, hey, something went on this, this month at this school because we've never seen something, uh, the usage that high before. Um, and we've also, you know, when the vendor brings the material in, they would even order that. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, it's kind of like double check. They're not allowed to drop it off unless the custodian signs off on it and is present. And then tracks it in. Yep. yep. Can I ask a question? I see here that um, contracts with service companies uh, to provide service on the copiers. Um, this is kind of going off topic. Is there any way, because I'm, I'm hearing that a lot of our copiers are not working in some of the buildings. Is there any way that we could look into some lease agreements and getting new copiers? In those we, are. we are. We I've, are. I've had a comprehensive study done with one of the companies. Um, one of the roadblocks is we have three, three companies that provide copier services to us. So to do anything comprehensive, we would need to move to one vendor. It would be very expensive to do that, so the budget's not there. So, and that analysis was just done a couple weeks ago. So I am looking to see if we can't p find our most problematic copiers and try to address them. But we, almost similar to vehicles, once the lease is over, then basically we tr transition over into the, the maintenance the contract and yeah. we own the problem. Right. Um, and yes, we do have some copiers out there that have three and four million copies on them, which, and we have some that are less than that. So yes, we are looking into it, but... Um, I'm hoping to address that need probably right after the first of the year and just spot check and fill in the holes where we have. But I think I, five or six schools have called me, and we also have some central office issues as well. But, yes, we are looking into it. There's got to be some companies out there with a, a good leasing agreement, especially right now with 
the leasing agreements are fine, but we just don't have the dollars in the budget to afford I, the leasing well, agreements I, I, is what it boils down to. I, I get that. That's why I'm wondering if we can't shuffle that to capital. It wouldn't be a capital expense because it's an ongoing lease. Okay. It should be an operating. So we'd even have to after, fund. Even after we've owned it. If we bought the copiers outright, like we're buying the vehicles and the buses outright, absolutely, we could do it out of the capital. But then again, there's only so many dollars over there as well. So one of the things here would be to look at the, the end road would be from the analysis that I did is if we had a plan in place, like a refresh on computers where we could get into the copier, but there's going to be a large lift. Once we get that large lift and we go with one vendor, then we can, and I say we, meaning our department can then manage those copies. We should see a reduction in toner usage. We should see a reduction in office supplies. We should see a reduction in, in paper. But it's that big lift of cost of signing on the dotted line, the cost of that lease, before a year or two later, we might see some reductions. We had the same thing when we went to the one, you know, the computers for the students. So, yeah, I, I, I get it. Just wondering if we couldn't talk to, because they have a lot of money, not a lot of money, they have some money in capital. I'm just from the county commissioner's the county commission. side. I'm I could certainly have that conversation with Mr. Seaman. Just Seaman's. wondering. Okay. I, I'm just, I, I mean, because I'm already here and, you know, I visited a couple of schools this week, and they're one of the big. I always ask. That's the first thing I ask. What, what do you, you know? What are your needs? What's going on? Every one of them are like, the a copier is not though, working. <laughs> just my history from my career, it is never really a good idea to buy a copier. It's just like everything else, technology related. It's obsolete sooner than it's paid for. You're still going to pay your maintenance. You're still going to have your supplies. It never washes out to be a savings to own those copiers. It's just a question. Yeah. No, we're, we, we, you know, we are looking so, into yeah, it. We've done the analysis. And, and honestly, part of it bring, is, again, forward. the three companies that we deal with is an issue because then I'm dealing with three vendors, three different systems. I'd like to consolidate that into one vendor. The other thing is they, when they did the analysis, they showed us where these units are and you'd be surprised how much overlap exists out there in the schools. Now, it could be because they have an older machine and it's over in the corner not even being used, but there's some overlap. And again, if we could get into that comprehensive plan, then I could work with that vendor and say, okay, this copy over here is being beat to death. Let's move this out of this school and send it over here that's because of the volume or whatever is not. So That's a really good It's point. a slow road, but yeah, we'll make some progress there. When does our contracts start running out? We have three of them, you said. So we have, so we have we deal with three different vendors, uh -huh. but we have quite a few contracts. Probably within two years, all of our lease agreements will be over for copiers. But when you close that in, can we then start putting pressure on the ones you – we have to bid it out, understand, but saying, look, it's come to an end and we're going to single source or something so, and so sharpen your pencils. Yeah, well, so yes, I can, I can do it one of two ways. We could certainly bid it out, and again, we'd have to have that influx of cash to do that because it would be a comprehensive plan. Or all three major vendors that we're dealing with, we deal with Rico, we deal with um, Sharp, and we deal with um, Conoco Minolta, which has a CAN component. All three of those are on some type of a state or national contract. So technically, I don't have to bid, but I would certainly talk to those vendors and say, because it's copier costs is what it comes down right. to, click charge. What's the click charge? And then once we can come to agreement that, yeah, then we could start pushing to one vendor. <coughs> Because I think they're all capable equipment. I mean, it's just like a Dell versus an HP. You know, you, you get what you pay for, but... Service is a big problem. And, and service. Service is a problem. Yeah, service. And then which one offers a better service, you know? Yeah. One of the companies has better a local deal. service out of Salisbury. One of them has it out of Columbia. But if, you know, you know bridge traffic aside, mm. it's probably equidistant. But um, I haven't heard of the service issues more so than it's just breaking down that the copiers are wearing out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank yes, you. I'll, I'll research it a little bit more. Um, page 40, uh, we were there with the custodial supplies and the computer equipment supplies. Um, just in the custodial, we're asking for a $30,000 increase. Page 41, meetings and conferences. Um, again, related to, um, I'm not sure what the 13, was it was that power school? Uh, this was the Power School Edge training that we had new personnel up in um, data testing, and, uh, and that's where, since this was related to the school information system, we sent them oh, to that training down in Orlando, and, and that was here. a one-time, yes, and that was a one-time cost there. But as you can see, there should probably be something in there to maintain certification issues and technology updates for that staff, 
Um, this isn't for our custodians to go on a meeting of the conference. This is really for our technology. Uh, and it's a $5,000 request there. Mileage reimbursement, again, this is mainly for our technicians to travel between schools um, or to and from here are two schools. Um, property insurance, again, through May, we're seeing some increases there, um, $4,000 increase. Utilities, electricity, and heat, static. Um, we should start shortly to see uh, some benefit from the solar field coming out there. Uh, but again, uh, any savings here likely for this current year would offset some of the overages as we talked about with custodial supplies. Communications, basically our phone and our internet costs. Why is there such a reduction there, sir, from the actual in 2019 to here? I have to look as to what... And imagine that being any less. Yeah, I have to look to see what we what may have exceeded that cost because we're pretty static on our phones. And, and here, can I ask system? a question? Because I just found this out in my own personal phone at home. Um, they were charging us for Fios on Ken Island. And I called, and they had a five dollar increase in a month payment on FiOS. And I called and I said, "Do you know I live on an island? I don't have FiOS." <laughs> and they had been charging us four dollars for the past year, and then they had a five dollar increase. So I got a nine dollar decrease on my phone bill. And if I hadn't asked, you gotta watch it. You have to. You have to ask. Stop so it in there. We, do you? We can, just did audits, okay. especially on phone numbers. Like, I'm just going to say this, for example, Centerville Middle School had about 13 different lines that over the years, you know, nobody knew where they went to. So we were able to drop, you know, all of them except for the main line, the uh, fire alarm, you know, those kinds of things. Internet. Only about three or four. But we have done an audit of that, and we're slowly going to those schools and going, hey, you know, don't need us anymore. Well, so, I would also call it, it's a, it's Verizon, right? Correct on all the buildings, or is it? it well, it depends. We also have like a um, yeah, a long, long distance provider. provider. Right. <laughs> it's, yeah, but they are analyzed. But it is something to ask. I mean, if they're charging us for FIOS and we don't have it in this county yet, yeah, right? I mean, it's something to ask. Get them on AT and T slips them in there too, so I wouldn't be. Oh, oh well, with I Verizon. think they all do it. Yeah. Yes, but you know, and if they don't watch it. Every month, if you don't watch it, they'll just throw one in there. Yeah. It was it. Is it? Is it? This. I. I don't have. Southern they don't have anything. No. So, but in Centerville, some. I, I think my neighbor has it. Yeah. Because I, I wanted it and I couldn't get it. Well, they they only had a certain number. They haven't brought across the water yet. Yeah. <laughs> we don't have. Yeah. Because yeah. I keep asking yeah. down my. I think it's actually coming up from Salisbury. It's down right, right down Mount Fifty. They just haven't branched off. Oh, it's like a railroad. You know, main yeah. lines, fine. It's so short, short lines. It's some short, short lines. lines. Everything around here is satellite or cable. But Verizon has it. It's yes. so close to a yeah, switching do. station, but they want to sell you something else and not. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, DSL, and that's DSL. DSL so that's that's is, even yeah. slower than. Sorry, you know. I brought it up, but <laughs> it's something to think about as far as. Okay, and then and then water and sewer to finish up this little thing. Uh, Three hundred thousand should be sufficient. You can see our costs uh, fluctuate a little bit based on, I guess, dry summers and. But there's a huge cost for Southernville in there. Yes, ma'am. Do that a couple years ago. Custodial equipment, again, just as, as Mr. Pender reiterated, you're trying to get the custodian some additional newer equipment to make them more efficient. So there's a $10,000 request there. And then vehicle replacement, as we talked about, this would just be for uh, the technology staff because um, we, we feel, based on the analysis, that we could provide a vehicle for our staff. So they're not using their personal vehicle and getting uh, mileage reimbursements. I think that's a service. I think that's a benefit. For custodial equipment, I, I don't like putting more money we have to, but there's a cost rewards too that if you can get better equipment, do the right way, and less maintenance, less man hours. I mean, you know, this might reflect ten thousand or even twenty thousand dollars more. But we, but you know, when we do that, you might be saving. Oh, definitely. You, and know. It, you know, you look at it. There's a lot of things. That, the vacuums that we're required to have in schools are about four hundred dollars. You know, now you start going to the ride alongs or the walk behind uh, items that we use. I mean, like we look at Ken Allen High School. I mean, that's a huge school. Mm -hmm. So we're able to get a ride on. That's that's twelve, fifteen thousand dollars. I mean, that's a drop of a hat. One one's gone, mm -hmm. but it does. You can tell the schools when I walk in that have the the newer equipment, the walk behinds, the orbital scrubbers. The other thing that we did this uh, past summer was going to the, the orbital sander. Basically, we're not having to use and purchase stripper for the floors. It's just a water base 
the um, you know the custodians and people weren't breathing that in anymore. Um, we, and it was actually amazing how many rooms they could do with one orbital um, sander compared to the old-fashioned way and the amount of stripper involved in that. Um, and we'd like to, in our capital budget this year, you know, request some more of those to, so that you know every school can get it. Because, man, it, it was just amazing. Well, amazing. I was impressed the way the schools looked there. They looked well, on them. Mm -hmm. to it. They're clean. and I mean, that's an environment that, you know, when you go in there, they're... Think, you know, I mean, it's a big, big difference. You walk in that curve, I feel like all that yeah, makes, makes a difference. And I, I mean, these guys do a good job. And it's hard to do with old facilities, too. Very hard. It makes all the difference. And then finishes up operation of plant. Maintenance of plant. Again, this is just fixing everything. Maintenance. Um, if you flip to page 44, you can see we do it with 3.4 central office staff and only 9.5 uh, maintenance staff. The 0.5 here is, um, it's not that we have a 0.5 person, we have 0.5 charge to the operating budget and 0.5 charge to food service uh, because of working on all the uh, air conditioning and things there. No, no, here's 0.5 is what, sir? Point, food service. We charge 0.5 to the food service category and 0.5 here. Are we on page 43? 44, 43, whichever. Yeah, 43. Uh-huh. I see. Did we add somebody for salaries and weight? No, add somebody for, I say, one of 50,000. So if you flip to page two, I mean page 44, yes, there is the only request so far, and I think we talked about this earlier, but um, there is one request for an additional maintenance person okay. that we also, I think we requested two last year, so okay. we're hoping we okay. can get by with so one. So this is a general maintenance person for the yes, sir. all the operations. If this is fun, it's the first person in 20 years you've added? Then it's 24. Since Ken Allen was built, right? So... Yes, that's where that is. So it is, and that's why the eight and a half is is highlighted in that color. That's where the uh, position comes from. We just and one additional maintenance staff. Repairs to buildings. Again, a little bit of fluctuation there. Um, we need to increase our refuse removal because we did go out to bid for a couple years for that. Uh, last year was the bid, and I think we have a three-year bid on that, and it was just a little bit more than what the budget can handle. So can it's a six thousand dollar. Can I go swap. back one item? Sure. No, no, no. Just on nine, forty-five. Repairs to buildings. We have the approved for this year, 195. Uh -huh. it, where are we right now in the budget at that cost, at that money? Is it about going to be on, it, or would it be? It all depends on what we're funded. When we turn in our uh, building assessment to the county commissioners, and basically three years ago they said, "Hey, how much money will you need in your building assessments to kind of maintain?" Um, items that are kind of a one-time fix and so last year they gave us uh, 1.3 million and we were able to do a ton of things this year it was a little bit less I want to say around 1 million um, if we continue to keep getting that capital funding we're fine with that line item if they That's what's good. My cancel point. it then yes we are my point is I I would just rather keep the 6,000 in there if, if it looks like we wouldn't be able to get the capital to fix some things because I mean look at no, where we went today there was a lot of stuff that needed to be done so uh, I I have no problem leaving that money in there for and, and again it's just want, but that's up to everyone it's it's not a cut it's just a move down into yeah. the refuse yeah, removal I so we'd that. have to leave that alone and then ask for six thousand dollars more but I can uh, we can uh, certainly well, do that my, my, my thing is that if we're getting a million three a million in thing shows where we're saving a little bit here if I can cut six and get a million that's not a bad deal I mean, not, you know, if they keep understanding. We'll be crying if we need that six. No, we're going to need more than six. We're going to be crying. I'll be crying, I guarantee, before it's over with. <laughs> I can't assure you. <laughs> yep. Anybody at the table disagree? <laughs> no. No. Yeah. No. Right. Yeah. Pest control, <laughs> environmental testing. Um, there is going to be some increase. I think it's water quality, Mr. Pender, on that is the reason. Even though the last two years we haven't really seen a large expenditure there, um, we are requesting because of the coming in with the lead testing there. Grounds maintenance, this is the standard amount we pay the county. Doesn't change. $330,037. And then maintenance contracts, again, for all of those systems there. The main increase here, if you will remember, we asked for an additional $28,000 last year. For a maintenance contract for all the security cameras that we've installed that was not funded so we're trying to absorb it from within but this funds that particular line um, 
request once again. You still get a lot of, I mean, not a lot, but federal money for the security and all this homeland security and stuff. Or the purchasing of it in Pur installation, yes. That's okay. It's a grant, the grants. Yeah. yeah. But we can't do the maintenance, the maintenance service itself. contract in that, right. And how about the lights? The lights were all covered under a grant. Remember the lights in the parking lot? But Yes. Those, but the maintenance those, of them are not covered. No, but it, once you install the LED in there, you get a, a larger... Um, window of opportunity that you don't have to repair them. Um, we're also looking at a couple projects right now with um, Delmar for Power and the rebates that are uh, pretty uh, in incredible. Um, and installing LED in the classroom. Several years ago, you're right. Remember we that? Did, we did yes. schools that were at the aging school point that we got money for. Um, and that was 2015. And now that's no longer there, so the best vehicle to use is the rebates offered by Delmar for Power. And, there, but Some of the payback on this, like I was reading yesterday for um, um, Centerville Elementary School, 2.2 months. I mean, it just, it was amazing. Wow. The payback on it. Um, I, you know, so we did, we did a survey of all the buildings that we did not have incorporated into that grant back then, so. 2015, 2016, yeah. yeah. Um, on page 46, um, a little uh, office supply account. You can see we've had some expenditures there, so there's a $500 request to fund office supplies and for the maintenance area. Um, Ms. Harper, to your point there, here's a $40,000 increase for the repairs. So this is the supplies. The prior one was when we need to hire an outside contractor, the $6,000. So we are seeing an increase of $40,000 there through the request. And then again, a vehicle operation. You can see we haven't really spent the $25,000 in the last couple of years. So $500 basically to offset the supplies and materials going into the, for the maintenance group. Can you say again what that 40000 is? That is for our supplies. So what we buy, drywall, screws, that kind of stuff is for motors. Yeah, for what our staff does. The six thousand dollar reduction was when we need to contract out something that our staff cannot do or doesn't have the skill set or the time. As you can see out of that, we try to do most of it in house. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, you're talking fifteen buildings, and 16. we approved a lot less last year. I mean, as far as the trend goes, mm -hmm. last couple of years actually. Okay. 47, again, a small amount for dues and subscriptions, again, related to the professional organizations, meetings and conferences. Um, again, it's mainly, a, when it says meetings and conferences, it's, it's the area where we put our professional development, such as for licenses, license requirements, uh, certifications. I'm sorry, what? ASBO. ASBO is in there, the Association of School Business Officials that we go to. Um, and then mileage and travel. So um, for those, most of the maintenance crew do have vehicles, but for the People that do not have a vehicle and they travel, there's a little bit of mileage money in there for that. Is there a way for you, is this a standard description of like maintenance and conferences? Or could we be more specific what you're saying? Um, it's instead a, for, of just from generally the, saying this pays for lodging and travel to meetings and conferences. When somebody reads that, they're like, well, they're going to a lot of meetings. So it's, it, well, they say it's only $2,000. Well, only $2,000, they, they can't go far. <laughs> yeah, but I'm, I'm just saying, I'm if, we make it, if we make this description, it's a little more realistic, because, I mean, you're convincing us, but the public would look at this. So from a budget standpoint, in all the counties I've worked in, they are standard descriptions. We don't, from that particular instance, get into the specifics because they could vary from year to year. We may go to this conference because it's in Baltimore this year, but we won't go next year because it's in California and we don't want to fly out there. So when it comes to this kind of a document, that the public document, we have a tendency to do some... Generic. generic descriptions. Generically, that is what it's used that's, for. Because that's really what it's for. But to get into, you know, the specifics, like I said, they could vary year to year. But we could certainly discuss well, that further. I just think about I mean, it. Like, okay. Well, I figured the state gave you the language. Yeah, what, what, did, it, what did you yeah. want it to say? No, I'm saying, like, the ones that are required by MSDE, we should put in. State requires this kind of licensing or, you know, something to make it a little more clear to the public that we aren't just out there sending people to conferences. It's just a perception thing I think we need to do. I mean, so costs associated with attending state required meetings. Something but it's like not that. just but it's that. Right. It may yeah. not just yeah. be required. It includes it depends that. on what's happening. Uh, Unless you say such as and then add 
yeah, appropriate other various. I think it's whatever. But then you're getting into a long drawn out description. Just and on a bowl. I would look at I would look at the ones like but, that. that. But the key point is, like you said, it's only two thousand dollars. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 That might get the us the down the shore, <laughs> Mac. But it gets it gets three <laughs> people to Ocean City yeah. for a three day conference. Exactly. That's it. Going to the I mean, but, I see yes. where she's coming from because we do have a public. I'll, I'll look into it. Next week, so we, we got to make, make this meeting. And fast. I don't fault you for that. <laughs> I know where you're going with that. And again, auto expense. So the cost of our maintenance vehicles the, is is charged here, and just based on some historical trend, we feel that we can offset three thousand uh, dollars there, which again funds the things right above it. So as you can see, the bottom line on the other charges is no increase requested overall. We're just rebalancing the accounts. Again, on page 48, um, nothing for equipment replacement or vehicle replacement there because the last couple of years, as Mr. Pender mentioned, we've been able to replace these vehicles via the capital account. And then we move on to page 49, big fixed charges. So, Mr. Smith, this is where you're going to see all your FICA and retirement costs and things like that. Um, so, basically, out of a, what's our budget, a little, a little over $100 million? $100 million. And that includes cost of fuel and other stuff, electricity. Uh huh. <coughs> so 21, 21 million is twenty one percent of that, uh -huh. and that hundred thousand in all salary. So right. you're well up to twenty five. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And it, and as you'll see through the budget process, and we talked about it last year, you know we're eighty two percent salaries and wages. Then we have to run the buses. We have to turn the lights on. When you come back down to that, there is that very little piece that we have any flexibility, whether it's meetings and conferences or, or a little bit of travel or some supplies and materials. But as far as what we have, I'll use the term flexibility to do, <coughs> it's a very small piece of the well, pie. Well, I mean, only like 4%, 2%, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's something probably in that like neighborhood. that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when you really analyze a budget and you understand the pie, Makes a makes a big difference in how you perceive that budget. I mean, I know how many times I've heard it, that we're a people business. We're the largest employer. Eighty-two percent of our budget is our salaries and wages and benefits for educating our students. Then you cut that pie down to what the administrative costs are on two percent. It, it's not outrageous to consider these numbers right. question real quick I, I, I just need to check real quick um, we are approved FY 2020 page I'm sorry page 49 then the request if you're keeping it the same so right now again because we haven't done the salary piece component oh, okay. reflected right, you'll see you. increases to these fixed charges um, and I'll talk one of the two. I've just gotten some preliminary data. Okay. So the retirement costs, uh, we're waiting on those. So these are all just basically placeholders. But as you recall, this is one of the areas based on the employee makeup. There, there is some flexibility. I would not recommend, unless there was some dramatic changes to our population or something like that, to go into this particular area to look for additional funds because this is when transportation might go over or we might have other anomalies, uh, something like that, that we're going to come to fix charges. So to, the next four pages it. are fluid? Pretty much. Okay. I mean, you're going to see an increase in retirement costs. All right. Okay. It, Again, when we get into some Kerwin discussions, you're going to see that even grow even further because that's part of their discussions as they're requiring us to match teacher salaries, and now we have to pay a portion of teacher retirement. That all factors into that calculation, so you're going to see some changes there. FICA, 7.65%. That's a no-brainer. Tuition reimbursement, we're keeping the same, most likely. Health insurance right now are very, very preliminary. is about a 6% increase. There is um, health care, I mean, the um, days... I'm sorry? Sick days, sick leave days. Where are they calculated? Sick leave? So it... Is it... Where is that calculated? So help me understand what you're, what you're asking well, for. Well, you have to have... Pay out. You have... Right. On your statement, you have to also put, you know, your oh. health care... Your sick day leave. So we only do that. So there's a calculation that we do for as part of the financial statement. There's not a budget for sick leave. If somebody were to leave because they retired and we had to pay them out for that little portion of sick leave or in the case as we discussed at the end of the year with the um, administrators that left and we had a large vacation payout, we generally charge those to a salary account within that particular category. Okay, so on the balance statement, you don't have just a line item that says sick leave and how much it is at that point? Okay, no, no. thank you. It's, it is listed on the financial statement as an obligation, short-term 
obligation, right. but it's but it's not listed here as a budgeted okay. item. Thank you. Um, again, insurance, liability, fidelity, workers' comp. Um, we're pretty good on most of this. Life insurance, I think we discussed, you know, what we might want to do there uh, related to um, life insurance for employees, uh, unemployment insurance. So you're going to, there's not much fluctuation here, as, as Ms. Harper mentioned, it's pretty fluid. Um, the only thing that I have right now, like I said, that I can hang my hat on is we're estimating about a 6% insurance cost. So that's 6% on us, or 6%, and then you divide that by the 8515. So majority of that 6% cost is going to be borne by us. Um, but again, very preliminary estimates. And, that and then we have steps and coal and all this other stuff, yes. which would be 3%. Yes. So, so, so what, when we start um, our negotiation discussions with the board, um, and then as we craft a little bit further in the budget, yes, you'll have. So last year, what the required was $2.4 million is what we gave the salary increases. I would imagine you'd be somewhere in that neighborhood again this year. And we talked earlier, you're trying to get the Kerwin money, what's possibly yes. going to be, and what our maintenance efforts should be yes just by stool and rubble yes and the, the only update i really have to share budget wise with the kerwin is there is a proposal that we would increase about five hundred thousand dollars of our budget of new kerwin money but again it's going to be restricted right. so restricted. it's going to be restricted to provide teacher classroom supplies and a lot of the air a lot of the cte pathways pay for those licenses and things like that so it is going to be restricted so it's not going to okay. it's not going to the majority is not going to salary improve it's going to allow us to have money for supplies this is one of their initiatives that's coming out so before they get to 22 with the revamping of all of the formulas that some of this that so remember last year they they gave us some placeholder money the 544 the pre-k right, right, that right. so now that commission has said hey because there's leftover funds from the state that the governor has not released, it now has to be released in 21. What's, what's the recommendation on how to release that money? And the recommendations from the Kerwin Commission was teacher supplies and technology and to funnel some money into the CTE uh, pathways because that's the recommendation of Kerwin. Now, as that goes forward with the legislature, the budget that the governor is going to put in, he could just say, I want to take that money that is allocated to the schools, and it has to be spent on schools, but I want to throw it over in school construction. I don't want to do teacher supplies. So this is very in its infancy as to these discussions that are happening. It'd be fantastic if they went to technology, because every one of the schools are screaming for it. Yes. But it's not, it's, it's not for... I'm talking more. about smart boards. I'm talking about, you know... Yeah, I think that requires a further discussion. I don't want to speak for Mr. Paluski, but, you know, if, whether a smart board's the right tool or some kind of smart device, yep. I watched one today that I was just, that classroom today at Bayside, it was amazing, just amazing. It, uh, part, was that a park class? Oh, yeah. And I was elementary school. <sighs> but Kerwin's not big, currently dealing with teachers' big computer salary screen. increases. Only what they put in the budget last year that will be put in the, the same amount. Same amount. Same amount. Right. And that's just a real current. It's already been, I'm not saying spent, but it's already been done. So it's just matching. They already passed that. And it's not putting extra money in for teach, more teachers in the classroom. It's not putting any of that in. I mean, it's it's just, it's just continuing what we did last year. It's maintaining what we had last year. Correct. So and so for 22, that's what they're that's focusing on now. Okay. And again, it comes back to the match. It comes back to the county share, you know, where that's going to fall in. And, and uh, we as a board get a little bit further. We'll have some discussions related to that and what the impact might be the county. We'll have some conversations with the county. Uh, just to make sure we're all on the same page, because, you know, they have their group that's telling them certain numbers. We have our group telling us certain numbers. I went to a meeting last week uh, with all the CFOs in the state, got a little bit more information, so that was helpful. Um, but, again, it, it could change tomorrow. And we've got – have we sent our September 30th numbers over to the state? Yes. So we can – you yes. can give me that I'll number. have that to you shortly. Yes, sir. So there was a question. Captain Kelly had wanted to talk about um, travel. And what I've mentioned is within each of these categories, that travel piece was included for a conference's mileage travel. That was in there. Um, the question is whether or not we were able to say how much we have spent so far. What I was explaining is that um, we got that request a couple of hours ago, and of course, Mr. Fister had another meeting. And it's not as simple as just pulling out a category and say, okay, this is where we are, because we go by invoice. And the, it could be, you know, Hilton Hotel, it could be some other. So it's not like we could just, you know, query a certain thing. So we'll be happy to get that information for you to show you where we are within each of these categories categories, um, 
but for today, we mm -hmm. just didn't have enough time to do it. Is there anything else you want to say about that? No, okay. no, I can, we're, we're happy to get that information and for any you. any travel is done by authorization of their supervisor. Correct. To the next supervisor, to the final person, and so I might not see it. Um, but you, unless you might it's not my see team, it, but, but one of your team is authorized. Correct. You're right. responsible correct. at some point. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. And one of them, and it's I all sign within, off on everyone. It has to stay within the budget anyway. Yeah, I understand. But okay. I mean, there's a checks and balance. Correct. And, and, and honestly, because there's not much money for travel in here, um, most of the instructional travel is happening in the grants that we have. You know. And, and so for myself, for example, if I'm going to a conference nine times out of ten, they're offering to pay something for me. So they're either going to cover the cost of my room or reimburse me for the cost of the room, which means reimburse the district for the cost of the room or pay for something. So it's, it's a rarity that I'm going to something that's not partially paid for. And it's all based on helping clean East County schools. Absolutely. I mean, that's the bottom line. Somewhere is going somewhere. Training. Because it, ben it benefits this school system. Absolutely. And just for the record, so I have submitted to the board a spreadsheet of all of the conferences and the meetings that I attend, and there's an estimate on that sheet. And for conferences, for me, about $3,600 for the year, um, one being the AASA, the Superintendents Association Conference, that one's about $2,000. I'm going to attend the Equal Opportunity Schools Conference, that's about 1000 because they're going to pay for part of that. And uh, Captain Kelly and I attended the, um, the MAID conference. That was about $500 for both of us. And then... Um, it was just a registration fee. Right. It's yeah. just... It was right. It's, I never submit um, reimbursement for meals. I can, but I never do anything like that, just to keep the cost down. There was another one. Um, M&S was about $100. The Maryland Negotiating Service. The school I Opportunity that. Schools is paying you to go? Mm, paying be for part of that, yeah. Part of your attendance, mm -hmm. but nice. the school system still pays for the flight and all that. Yeah. It's about a thousand dollars is the estimate. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we need to, according, we need to. Miss Harper and I need to approve your your. Uh, You've got it. Yep. Yeah. Okay. You got it. Yeah. On no, September the nineteenth. We'll do it and, later. And you also uh, have it again. I printed out another one for you today. If I you got it. No. One. All I'm saying is the whatever you have to submit for reimbursement from Mr. Fister. Ms. Harper and I need to approve that. Yeah. It's in the contract. We'll do it later. Right. Just want to let you know, because yep. I haven't seen, we haven't seen any this year. Okay. So if you haven't right. been reimbursed. I'll make it's, in, that. it's in March. Okay. So you haven't been reimbursed for any of them this year that you... I don't, get, on. I, I don't get any of that. So it sort of goes through the system. Mm -hmm. um, as we get closer, we pay for it. I reserve the space. We mm -hmm. pay for it. It goes on the credit card, and that's how it gets paid. Okay. Well, we need to see those just on yours. Okay. So just to make it so I don't have to go through it again, Ms. Wright, make, please make sure that Captain Kelly gets anything for my travel. Okay. Only because that's in your country. Yeah. And that's why, we get, that's why I gave you the spreadsheet. Yep. No, we yep. have to approve. We got it. The, we got it. You, you, I gave you what you asked for. The reimbursement we need to have. That's what I'm saying. Oh, it was in your country. So I know we only have a couple minutes for the agenda. First thing, was this helpful? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely helpful. Okay. Thank you okay. so much. Um, just a little bit of housekeeping. Um, the questions from the last time are out there. You should have got a link in your email. Um, it's a Google Sheet. Everybody should have access to it. Can you tell me about when, this? When was that? So when we did the last work session, we created a Google document and where everybody's question was logged in. You know, what makes up the, pro the, the professional the subscriptions and dues? Okay. And then we have a responsible staff. They've responded. There's only one out there, uh, Mr. Paluski and I. We just haven't had time to get together on some of the license agreements. But all of the answers are out there. It's a fluid document. Um, and you sent it to us? I believe so. And it, it stays on your uh, weekly report. Okay. Yep, it's in there as well. There should Morrison be a link there. Um, so please take a look at those, and then questions from tonight, we'll, we will add those. Again, not another document would be, a, we'll just add to it. What you report, there's a link. And then the final thing is, did everybody get my email about the little uh, survey for the budget priorities of the board? I didn't see, Today. The, I didn't see the survey, Today, Mr. Filter. I didn't have a link No, it was, should have been Monday afternoon. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, I I'll, I'll resend that then, because I created a little form for, as we've talked about the board's budget priorities, and there's a listing of 10 or 11, rank them 1 to 5. Um, you can, however you want to rank them there. Uh, there was mention of it, but that was, it was, it was not an editable. It's so a, I thought it was, it was like a placeholder. 
Okay. You couldn't click in the Google, Google form? I, was, I wasn't able to either. And I, get, okay. I did get the email. Okay. I apologize for that. So let me resend it as a matter of fact, in your weekly update, if you don't mind, weekly update Friday. I'm looking now. No, this, this upcoming weekly update that Ms. Wright will send you, we did put a link in there to this thing. So we'll just leave it there. But I'll go ahead and send it as well tomorrow morning. So you'll have it. I apologize for that. It was, it was, okay. I could send it via email and that's what I did, thinking that was the more secure way to do it. But we'll give it to a, we'll send you a link. Um, but again, just a listing, get them back, and that way we can then populate that and start crafting what the board priorities are. Okay. The Thank weekly you. report that had to answer to our questions, what month, week was that in? Every week. It's um, been every week it's since. Every Friday. It's in every week? I know it's in every, but I, I look at that stuff, but I don't. And it's in the finance section. If you look, it'll have a link right there. Okay, that's okay. probably why I'm missing it. Thank you, Mr. Wright. Gotcha. Um, Does that mean you're not reading what I put in there? I'd, I'd honestly look, I just, it. I've never seen it, so it's ongoing. You said well, finance. You know. That's probably why I missed it. I'm going, okay, she's not reading what I'm, I'm putting I'd, in. I'd, I'd look at it, but I, I have one thing, and I don't know how far to go. And keep in mind that if it's highlighted in blue, even though it doesn't say link, if it's highlighted in blue, there's a link there. Oh. And underlined. Okay, well, there you go. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to hit I you. I am not oh. socially relevant when it comes gotcha. to technology, guys. Are gonna so, work with me. But please, as we go through this process, um, any questions, you know, run them through, you know, Dr. That's Kane, and then I'll be happy to answer them. Um, and then as we go through the next budget workshops, um, you know, we'll keep this document in mind. We'll produce some of the documents we did last year and hopefully make it a, I'll just look at it a, a, a fluid process. Um, can I revisit the policy issue? No. Please, because I was under the impression we were going to come here to this table as a team, as a board, and work on policies. Policies are a board job duty. So when the committee does their thing, they bring it to us to look over, make any changes, get it ready to go out for a read. That can't possibly have been done in this meeting with 10 minutes dedicated to the policy. So... I was under the impression we were going to start working in work sessions as a board on policies. Maybe not this time, which I expected to do, but that's really the function, the main function of this board is policy work. Mm -hmm. It's in our manual. Read your manual. Well, I think if you, your committee does the policy and does the work on it and gets it where it's readable... Then we receive it ahead of time. We can read through them. Exactly. Then we come in exactly. We can discuss exactly. Any issues we have. And and I feel ten minutes wasn't appropriate if we were at that place today to have well, done that. That's it's, just it's kind of, kind of a mute point at this point, Mrs. Harlan. Yeah, we'll we're not going to be discussing that it tonight for the future. Yes. Good. Okay. Any other budget questions? Next item is um, future meetings and events. Is December fourth is our next board meeting. December eighteenth is the work session. And that's all we have coming up. Any other questions on that issue? Okay, I need a motion to move into closed session. So moved. Pursuant to the general provisions, Article 3-104, I move that we meet in closed session to perform an administrative function and to discuss personnel. I have a second. Move. Second. I have a motion to second. All in favor, go into closed session. Aye. 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 All opposed to go into closed session? Okay. Yeah, I said that. Move into closed session. Thank you. We will not be returning. We'll re we will adjourn from closed session. Mm -hmm.